I so might. Oregon has kind of a uh, kind of a pretty easy way to amend the Constitution. So you can either get it referred to by the legislature, or the citizens can do that with I think 118,000 signatures can put a, hmm. an initiative forward that will amend the Constitution. So kind of it's pretty easy to do in Oregon, and we've done it tons of times. And uh, I just got done teaching a course on the Oregon Constitution, and it's kind of um, when you read the U.S. Constitution, it's a it's a it's pithy and trim and you know, jam-packed and concise, and we read the Oregon Constitution, it's all over the place, and it's everything, and it's taxes on liquor and all this kind of stuff, and mobile homes and, you know, all that. And so uh, wow, wow. Th so that's kind of what happens when you have a uh, thing. Now, we, we do things in our the, the Constitution you think of as being the, the ultimate rule book for how we run our government, which is what it should be. And in Oregon, it's just a way of uh, when we have something we want to make permanent law and we don't want anyone to touch it, then we just put it in, plop it in the Constitution if we can, So, which is maybe not the best way to do things. Yeah, but, because it's almost like set in stone at that point, right. so you can't really go back. And so, um, you know, that, That's we, why we make constitutions so. hard to amend, you know, like the U.S. Constitution, but uh -huh. Oregon's is a little bit easier. But anyway, the first one is uh, Measure 94, which... Uh, um, it amends the Constitution, like you said, and it eliminates the mandatory retirement age for uh, state judges. So right now, judges are required to retire at age 75. And the the freedom part of me says that nobody should be required to, to leave their job just because of their age or anything like that. So I'm kind of, there's a part of me that's kind of against it. Because there, there's, I've known, we've all known people that are older than 75 that are sharp as a tack and, mm -hmm. you know, have... They want to keep working? Yeah, they want to keep working. They have a lot of useful life in them. So... Um, I, I'd hate to have someone be uh, eliminated uh, f from contention just because of their age. But on the other hand, we have kind of a problem in Oregon in that um, uh, we, it's with judges and with uh, state representatives too. Is we don't when they when they leave their office partway through their term, we don't have a good way of replacing them. Right now, they get we, they get an appointed replacement, and that creates an incumbent. And so, and it's always hard to get rid of an incumbent. And so we have some fixing that needs to be done, and I'm just not sure that this ballot measure does it. But we need to, one of the things we need to do is say, when a judge does leave office, or when a state representative does leave office, that the replacement is picked by the people. That we don't, we don't, uh, um, we don't have a uh, appointment process mm -hmm. for that, and this this doesn't really do that. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, so so you'd vote no. Um, I, I voted no in the legislature on referring this to the people, and um, there's some good and bad about it, but uh, um, uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's it goes both ways mm -hmm. on that. So. Well, maybe uh, not putting it in stone in our constitution. Maybe that's the wrong thing yeah. to do. Yeah. So. Although, although if you want to fix it, you have to go to the Constitution oh. because uh, it, right now the mandatory retirement is in the Constitution. So this oh. is oh, eliminating eliminating the mandatory retirement. So it's taking something out of the Constitution. So it's oh, I see. Okay. Not, it's not like junking uh -huh. up the Constitution. It's taking something taking out. Taking something out. Yeah, okay, so, so maybe a yes. <laughs> so, well, maybe. There's, yeah, like I said, yeah, there's I mean, good and kind bad. Yeah, it's kind of good and bad. Okay. Yeah, but that, well, anyway, that's that, enough yeah, that's information to know what, what's going on there. Okay, 95. So 95 also amends the Constitution. And this one um, is, is a little bit scary to me. And this this one could go both ways. What this does is it allows uh, public universities to um, invest in equities, which is stocks. Um, and um, I just wonder about the wisdom of that. Uh, mm -hmm. On the one hand, um, you'd say, like, uh, if Oregon State University researchers came up with a widget that had some sort of um, commercial value, that it might be a good thing to say, hey, let's partner with some private company and um, they can pay us back with stock or whatever, and we'll market that widget that was invented at Oregon State University. So in that sense, it wouldn't be such a bad thing to have them own stock. But th this sounds more like they're going to be uh, an investment company, and they're going to try to make a bunch of money and use that to lower tuition or whatever. And I just, I just think that they need to stay true to their mission, that we don't need uh, universities out there play in the stock market to try to educate the kids. They need to they need to kind of stay true to their mission, which is to educate kids. And if they need more money, then that needs to come through tuition or, or tax tax dollars or whatever. But uh, uh, I kind of have a problem with that one. So I almost think that's a no one. Okay. And, and that one also amends the Constitution because right now the Constitution says that no that the state of Oregon isn't allowed to own any stock in any com company, and that includes a university, which is part of the state of Oregon. Oh, right, right. So but yeah, because, okay, we're not just talking about a university. We're talking about a public university, just which, the is, public which is state-owned. Yeah. yeah, no, so, get, get them out of that. Yeah, so, like, Willamette uh -huh. University, they're a uh -huh. private thing. They can do whatever they want. But uh, Okay. So. 
Measure 96 also uh, amends the Constitution, and this one dedicates 1.5% uh, of the state lottery proceeds to, sp to fund services for Oregon veterans. And so the, the lottery money is kind of a big pie. We get what we get every year. And then what this is going to do is create a little tiny little 1.5% slice out of that pie that's a permanent 1.5% slice. And if you look at, so there's other things that are permanent slices that have their own dedicated amount. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look at what this will come out of is the things that don't have a dedicated amount. And mostly that's uh, it's, uh, education and economic development. And I think um, with education, it's not going to impact that. The state is going to invest what we invest in education, K through 12 education, and whatever the lottery contributes to that will just be backfilled by the, by the state. So what we're really talking about is it competes with uh, economic development. And so the question really boils down to what would you rather do, spend lottery money on services for veterans or economic development? And I've seen quite a bit, not all, but quite a bit of economic development money uh, spent not so wisely, and so I'm, I'm thinking veterans are a better choice on that mm -hmm. one. So I, uh, to me, that's a pretty easy one to do, and I'm I'm glad that that we have this to, to vote for. So because there's there's a part of me that uh, doesn't want to have a dedicated slice like that, but this is a this is a good use of the money there, and so I think even having a permanent one and a half percent for veterans is is a is a good vote. So okay, so yes, on ninety six. Yeah. 97 is going to get, uh, you'll, you don't need to hear it from uh, you and I on this. Uh, we, this one's going to get um, a lot of, you'll, you'll get a lot of millions of dollars worth of advertising on this one. But this is the, uh, the tax on retail sales uh, mm -hmm. in Oregon here. For corporations that, are over, that, that have over $25 million in sales in the state of Oregon. So a good example of, to get a feel for what we're talking about here is Wilco Farm Stores, their annual revenues are about $25 million. So they're right at the line of somebody who would pay the taxes there. So when you think of big corporations, you think of, uh, of Walmart or Exxon Mobil or something like that. But th this is going to go down to Wilco Farm Stores there. So um, uh, this is going to be a bad thing. It's going to behave like a sales tax. And um, I, I it's, they t say it's going to be uh, $600 per person in Oregon that it's going to impact. So if you have a family mm -hmm. of four, that's $2,400 that you're going to pay. That's $200 a month extra that you're going to pay. I mean, that's more than a cable bill for most people. So. Well, right, because they tax these corporations, but then that goes down the, to the consumers. They'll have no choice. They'll have to pass that on to the consumers. Yeah, so, so everybody will wind up paying for it. And, mm -hmm. and it's not the, just the rich people that are paying for it, but everyone will. Right. You know, and another thing, too, is... You know, Oregon has a tendency to always try to find a way to tax. And, and, and what they do is they use propaganda to make people mad at rich people or this yep. group or that group. Mm -hmm. And then they, then, so then, you know, people get mad at them and it's like, yeah, they need to pay more, so let's tax them. And then the government just wastes the money. Yep. Waste the money. And th th that's a great point because, uh, so I mean, part of it is that it's going to be tough for families to digest the, t the increase that they're going to have to pay. But to me, almost a bigger reason to vote no on this is we're going to increase the size of government by 30% in the state of Oregon. I mean, that's huge. And what, I just you mean think, by that, by voting yes on that? Yeah, by voting, if you vote yes, that's going to increase the size of government by 30%. We're going to have 30% bigger government there. We're going to go uh, from from uh, uh, 20 billion dollars a, a year um, is the general fund, the discretionary budget uh -huh. of the state of Oregon will just all of a sudden turn to 26 billion dollars uh -huh. every two years. Uh, so um, uh, that's that's going to be a huge thing. I just don't I don't think that big government is the answer to solving any problem that we have. Try to yeah. get our government smaller, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not yeah. bigger. Right, not bigger okay. at least. All right, 98, 99, and 100, and we have just a few minutes left. Uh, good. So 98 is, uh, um, is going to require the state to fund, uh, they call it dropout prevention, which is a good thing, and, uh, and uh, career and college readiness programs. So those are some of the uh, career technical education kind of things, you know, welding and all that kind of stuff. They're going to um, have some extra money that goes to schools to fund those, mm -hmm. those programs. Um, I almost think that schools should be doing that out of the money that they have, but yeah. uh, this, there's, this is not a, really a bad vote here, but I, just, I almost just think that, um, for, for goodness sake, these people have only golf, one golf club in their bag, and that's give us more money, you know? Yeah. So I almost think, uh, but, uh, but the, the, the aim of this is good, but I just think that we can find other money to do that. Right. Me measure you 90, 99 um, 
it creates an outdoor school education fund, again, funded through the lottery, so this is going to compete with economic development, and you have to ask yourself the question of, is it better for lottery money or economic development money, and that's just tough for me. Um, there's a, a part of me that's, when I went to outdoor school, it was a good learning experience, and it was fun, and it was the uh -huh. kind of thing that keeps kids in school, so, but, uh, you know, um, you wonder if it's just not their little... Uh, uh, green education camp or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so that's just uh, if you think economic development money or, or uh, outdoor school. And then Measure 100 is, uh, prohibits the sale of uh, certain parts of wildlife species. Uh, so, like, it's a ban on sale of ivory and tusks and things like that from uh, endangered species. And really, it's going to be, it's going to, introduce it's not going to do the good that it intends you know um it's not going to keep elephants from being shot in africa or anything like that that just they'll go find another market for them or another way to get it in and it's just going to hurt people like grandma wants to sell her piano or something like that or wow. grandpa has a watch with a ivory inlay on it or something like that and it's just going to cause a bunch of problems and not really solve the problem that it's trying to solve so uh um i'm, a, I'm not happy with that one okay you know, and again, when you amend the Constitution, <laughs> it puts although, it in stone. Yeah, although this one, this one doesn't amend the Constitution. It's just, just a statute there. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. But, so, again, we have no on 94, no on 95. Um, and I know there's some variants. Um, sure. Yes on 96, mm -hmm. no on 97, no on 98, no on 99. So, and 100. So, no on everything but 96. Lots of no's out there, aren't there? Yeah, there's yeah. lots of stuff to vote no on. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to, unless we're trying to make government smaller, why give it more leverage and make it bigger yeah. and, get, you know, control this more? And it's tough because everything's the puppies and kittens initiative, you know? Yeah. And so it's tough to vote no on this stuff, you know? Yeah. I want to help kids and I want to help veterans and all that. So it's, it's tough, but so you have to see through some of that stuff every now and then. To yeah, yeah. It, it is hard mm -hmm. because, um, you know, our freedom is about keeping government small mm -hmm. and not dictating, you know, dictating very little. You know, we want life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. The government's supposed to take over infrastructure and, and, and public safety, and after that, leave us alone. Yeah. And um, if we had more money, if people had more money in their pockets, you know, things like education would be a lot cheaper for people to choose their education. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. anyway... Uh, Anything else you want to comment on? Yeah, we, too bad we don't have an initiative on uh, uh, funding bureaucrat salaries or something like that. We could really vote no on that there, one. Right? There we go. Okay, well, anybody out there motivated, you can start your own initiative. We did a show on that one time about how to, how to um, do that process, and, and it's not too hard. Yep. yep. So, um, but we do need to hang on to our freedoms, the ones we still have, and we need to vote. Um, please, again... Um, you know, really vote for, you know, Donald Trump. Um, again, some of, you know, the governor, Bud Pierce, Dennis Richardson, yep. Jeff Goodman, you know, Mike Nearman, of course, and um, Ron Noble, you know, more locally here to Yamhill County. And, um, you know, and there's other good people out there. And this, is, this, this, again, is November 8th. So I encourage you to do that and try to make a difference in our nation. Mm -hmm. And have a good week. Bye-bye. Inspiration. Arts and crafts. Health and wellness. Communication and information. We're here to encourage and inspire you. You have a gift? We know you do. And so do we. Whether you come in to look by or want to promote your gift, we invite you to come in because when we're working together, we can accomplish great things.